classroom, I need to establish a foundational confidence with my students because that is the most important thing to me. And so the student that I focused on here is Ada, and she was a part of Nun A. And so at the very beginning of the year, I asked my students in their beauty books what my, they thought they learned best. And so Ada told me that she likes visuals, she likes explanations, and she likes auditory. So she pretty much likes everything. But over the year, we kind of figured out what way she learned best. And the other thing I did with the beauty books is, I know you can't even read this, so I'm going to tell you what it says, um, is that I really used it as a form of communication between them. And so this was a 3 2 one. It was an ARF assignment. Three things that you learned this week, two things you liked and didn't like, and why, and then one thing you still have questions about. So this was our um, direct and inverse variation beginning, and she still had questions about the constant of variation and why it was 1.6 between miles and kilometers. But she really grew throughout the year, and by March, when we were doing quadratics, this is the box method, and that was when I really saw Ada as who I came to know and love. And so, this is her right here, and some of my other students that are in the front row too. And so this is my favorite teacher moment with her, and it happened, we were doing a graphing calculator exercise, it was called Kittens with Mittens, they had read a poem, and then they were doing a packet. And so obviously it's on the screen, but I will read it to you too. So the last question, was about becoming champion of the day. And so Ada was like, well, Ms. M, how do we know if we're champion of the day? And it's like, well, let's look at the poem. And so we read back to the poem, and the person that enclosed the biggest area was champion of the day. And so I asked if it, her and Lily, who was her partner, had done that. And so she said they did, because the two highest points were their highest points on their graph, which, for those of you that don't know math, that's how you find the maximum area, which I had taught them. And so, she got super excited and started fist pumping and singing the infamous Queen song, We Are the Champions. <laughs> and so then it got even better because she said, Miss M, I actually get this stuff. I'm so proud of myself. And that is something you do not hear from her very much at all. So that was really awesome. And finally, my very last assignment I got from her, at the top, you can see she says, I don't really get this, and I probably got it all wrong, but at least I tried it. And from the beginning of the year, that is a big accomplishment because there are a few problems that she thought that she did wrong, so she refused to even turn them into me. And so we've come a long way. And I've done it with a few other students in my classroom as well, but she has stood out the most. And so we move to ingredient number two, which is our classroom culture. And you can see at the top are my two ninth grade classes. 9B is on the left, 9A is on the right. And so establishing a classroom culture is next. And that is extremely important before any learning can happen. And so the key components to my culture are first, educating the whole student. And I did a big thing this year with teaching them manners and how to say please and thank you because a lot of them didn't know how to do that. And so by the end of the year, they were fronting each other and like, well, she's not going to let you borrow a pencil if you don't say please. And so it really, uh, and then this is all of us on denim day. So we all dressed up to support a cause and we got little buttons and they really like them and they're still on some of their back. And then we move to my other things around the building. So this is a dance class I did with the juniors. Um, on Thursdays, we did a Just Dance. And of course, I couldn't say no to them. So that's how I ended up doing that one. <laughs> and I also had lunch duty with the ninth graders, which is where I got to know them better outside of the classroom. I was also after school with them. And I had asked on a survey at the end of the year, if Miss M was fun and interesting, and one of my students responded, of course she is, that's why I'm after school all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really big thing for me. And we did homework, we listened to music, I gave photography lessons, because that's one of my other passions, which they all know. And I gave, well, as much life advice as I could, but they also gave me some of their own. And then, 
outside of the classroom, outside of the school altogether, um, I became kind of the unofficial assistant coach for cross country and somehow ended up on a bus to championships bright and early on Saturday morning back in the fall because I love them all so much. And uh, I went to basketball games, dance recitals, other performances, and still track stuff now. And that doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, we all are busy and we're all doing whatever, but that's what makes the difference between a good teacher and a great teacher, in my opinion, is like really getting to know your students as a whole. And I think the cross country, the reason why it's here is because that was when I felt that I really connected to them. Because not just the kids that were on the team, but kids that went to watch and that saw that I was really invested in them and their interests as well. And so, then we moved back into the classroom with our lovely POD books. And so every day, they would come into my classroom, their POD books would either be on their desks or there'd be groups on the board, because I always did assign seatings or assign groups, and there would be a POD, a problem of the day. Sorry, I forget that not everyone knows what that means. And so uh, they would immediately start working, and we would go over it sometimes as a class, sometimes it would be a silent thing. And this is like, I showed you excerpts from Ada's before, um, where I could communicate with them. <coughs> I asked them how they thought they were doing, I had them set goals for themselves, and I just used basic skills check-ins, but they were a very good thing for structure in my classroom. So I found, and as I did the rest of the ninth grade team, that they needed a little bit of st structure. So this is one thing that I used throughout the year, um, was a timer, and it actually explodes when it gets to the end. And so that was pretty exciting. And there are other ones. There are fireworks and dynamite money and whatever. We experimented with all of them. But this really kept all of us on track, both them and myself, because I also had a lot of issues with timing at the beginning of the year. And some of the lessons that I thought were only going to take a day took like two or three because we just got so into them or I just like hadn't judged it correctly. And so as I moved on, I grew, as did they. And... Then, after we have the classroom culture and the confidence, we can then move on to the actual content. So the actual math. So I struggled a little bit with that this year because I wanted to make math fun, interesting, engaging, do a lot of hands-on stuff. And I began to realize algebra sometimes isn't that fun. I mean, you have to teach exponential, you have to teach quadratics. Like, how do you relate that to a real life? But I began to realize there are other things that you can do to make it fun. And so, we will get to that. Yeah. So, the next ingredient is the cheese. So, I add a lot of cheese in my classroom, a lot of personalization. And there are two different types of cheese in this mac and cheese, but there are so many different types of cheese in my classroom <laughs> because I do a lot of variety, a lot of personalization, a lot of differentiating, and a lot of cheering. And so, this is. Oh, uh, hold on is a lesson that I did on Justin Bieber. And yes, I gave them a worksheet with Justin Bieber, and I had one student ask if she could take out her phone. I was like, well, why would you want to take out your phone? And she's like, well, I want to tweet a picture of this worksheet, because what math teacher would give us a worksheet with Justin Bieber on it? <laughs> so, apparently, not very traditional, but very effective, because they remember stuff like that. And I also thought that if I was learning a little bit about them, they could learn a little bit about me. So this is my brother. This is his soccer team. And they learned a lot about his soccer team. They made the Elite Eight this year and almost made it to Georgia. And they consistently asked about how he did and remembered up until April where he went. And so I thought that sharing a little bit of myself was the same as them sharing with me. So they knew all about my family, all about my roommates, all about whatever else. And this is a video of them presenting these projects that are around the room. Number of dollars to get more guys in a page to include the amount, the cost of variation, which is 0 0.16 or your normal size, 0 0.167. Right. I mean, the right sense it goes up and the other one also goes up. 
most the number of people goes up, so does the number of cars. But not by number of cars. cars are still goes up. Oh yeah. So we realized that when I finished the next step, the next step, and 
vertex. Uh, well, how do you connect it to that center set? Um, which one do I use? Yeah. Um, Alright, so, as you explain this, is just another group. Okay, so how does it connect to the X energy? Oh, because the X energy. But overall, it was a learning experience for me and them, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. 